So something else that kind of bridges the world between bodybuilding and powerlifting is this, this question I wanted to ask you about, which is basically one of Newton's laws, right? So force equals mass times acceleration. Okay. So, um, let's just say I'm on the ground, I've got my dumbbells or I'm on a bench and I've got my dumbbells and I'm going to press them. One school of thought is press them as quickly as possible because force equals mass times acceleration. The mass of this thing is fixed. So any speed with which I lift it is accelerating because I'm moving against gravity, but the faster I can do it, the greater the force. But of course, at some point, the weight becomes so heavy that you increase the effort more on the mass variable than on the acceleration variable. So in other words, we can manipulate mass and acceleration to reach maximum force. Now, an extreme example of that is you doing a one rep max. Right. But as you pointed out, the more elite a power lifter becomes, the slower that is. In other words, the lower the acceleration is, and therefore the more they're emphasizing the mass, which is of course what you get scored on. No one's scoring you on the acceleration. Right. How does how do we think about that in terms of mixing and matching the mass versus the acceleration variable in an effort to optimize force? Because of course we also don't want to go to maximum force every time. Because if I did maximum force with a lightweight, I'd probably move it too quickly. I could injure myself as well. So do, do you think about the variation of mass and acceleration when you're moving weight? So, yeah. So if you think about what the expression of strength is, it's basically force. Um, so as you mentioned, if it's a very heavy weight, it'll just move slower. If it's a lightweight, you can still apply the same force and it will just move more quickly. Uh, so this is actually a, a concept that um, I heard uh, my coach Zach talk about on a podcast mm. was they do quite a bit of we'll do a heavy single or double or whatever it is. And then our back offsets are relatively light, like talking RPE four or five, but trying to move them as quickly as possible. On both, I, let's just talk about the concentric now. And then I want yeah. to actually come and have the discussion about the eccentric. Yeah, so, on yeah. the concentric, yeah, 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 exactly. And because that is in terms of strength, that is the closest expression of that. So in other words, what, if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying your coach is saying, look, on the heavy weights, we'll, they're going to move slow because they have to. But to keep training strength, I want you to move as quickly as possible as we come down on weight. Bingo. Bingo. And that, so the idea is, well, we're still applying the same force. It's going to move more quickly, but it's going to be less fatiguing because it's lighter weight. So that's kind of the, the concept behind it. Now, in terms of- Is that happening with you? So for example, when you did, let's just say your back wasn't hurting yesterday. If you were out there doing, today was an RPE six day, do you think that your speed would have increased- sufficiently that you would have almost matched 90% of the force you'd put out on a one rep max best? It's hard to tell because I've never actually done okay. the calculation of the yeah, force. Yeah. I, I imagine there's probably a sweet spot somewhere in there where like too heavy probably has less force than, yeah. you know, um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure where that is. Um, as far as like um, hypertrophy, I think that force is probably less important. I think it's more about just having su enough sufficiently hard sets, however you slice that. So, uh, for example, like the whole idea of time under tension training was yes. very, uh, popular. Um, and if you look at some of the initial research, um, I think there was a study where they had people doing curls and I may butcher the study, so I apologize, but it was kind of like a six second eccentric, six second concentric, and they had them go to failure and they had another group that just did normal kind of cadence and they had them match the number of reps and found that the group that was uh, doing the slow eccentrics and slow concentrics gained more muscle. And so people said, well, see, there you go. Well, the problem is they were using like 30% of, of their one rep max for like 10 reps going really slow. Well, if you're going at a normal pace, how many times could you do 30% of one rep max? I mean, you could do 30, 40, 50 reps, right? So it wasn't, I don't want to say the study was bad. It's not bad. It answered the question it wanted to answer. But if you're going to compare them straight up, really what it needs to be is if you take both of these things to failure, so the same level of intensity or sufficient difficulty, mm. what does the outcome look like then? And so when they do that, they really see very little difference between uh, slow lifting and fast lifting. 
Um, there was a study that just came out that looked at fast eccentrics versus slow eccentrics and found that there was actually a little bit better uh, outcomes with fast eccentrics compared to slow eccentrics. And that actually relates back to... for With respect to muscle mass? Yeah. Which you mentioned this to me earlier. The only time I've ever done a fast eccentric is on my Exerfly machine, that machine that I get yep. in the gym. Because you're forced to. Like it's, yep. it's pulling you down so quickly that you're screaming down and you're coming to a stop. Outside of that, I, it never occurred to me to do an eccentric quickly. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm doing eccentric deadlifts, I'm actually tr almost trying to come down as slowly as I can in right. my head thinking this is more beneficial because I was thinking it's more time under tension. It's probably partly with the lift too as well. Uh -huh. um, and um, there's probably, it's, it's kind of like you, you don't want to take it too extreme, right? Like if yeah. you're actually, like if you're doing a squat and you just dive bomb and there's no tension on the bar, right? Uh, one, that's going to look really bad <laughs> when you're trying to come out of it. Uh, and two, it's probably not the what they're actually seeing in the research. I think the idea of a, let's use a uh, bicep curl because that's a yeah. it's a safer exercise. So this research suggests that you take two people that are doing the exact same weight and they're the same people basically, mm -hmm. and they're doing the same speed of their concentric, and one of them is doing let's say a, it's a two second concentric and he's doing a two second eccentric, and the other guy's going two up six down. Mm -hmm. They're saying the two two will technically produce might, more hypertrophy. Might be better. So I, I say might because it's just so one interesting. Study. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you think about like mechanotransduction and, you know, the force, the mechanical tension being applied to a muscle, when you're kind of getting to that point where the muscle is stopping and then having to come the other way. Yeah. If it's fast, I mean, that's probably more tension at that specific point. Yeah, yeah. So we just don't know enough about this stuff right now to really be able to say for sure. But I think... You know, and I also don't want to make it sound like there's no benefit to like slow movements, especially for people who like have pain or they don't want to go heavy, you know, those sorts of things. Then, you know, slowing down a movement to either one, because a lot of times pain can be tied to velocity. If you just slow down a movement, it yeah. won't be as painful. Um, so I've used tempo training like pretty liberally in some of my training cycles just to make it so I had to use less weight, but still make it pretty difficult. Now, was it as good as, you know, me doing my regular movement? Maybe not, but it's still better than doing nothing, right? So it's always important to keep those, like those things in mind in terms of like, don't let, you know, perfection be the enemy of, of progress. Uh, so I do think that like slow movements still have application uh, for people, like I said, who have pain or if they don't feel comfortable with heavy weight. Uh, you can make it much more difficult just by slowing down the movement. And at the end of the day, the biggest determinant is just doing enough number of hard sets, however that kind of looks.